and g'day and welcome back to Liberty Chat, our weekly roundup of all things uh, politics, this election and Liberal Democrats. Uh, I'm your host, John Briggs. Uh, we've got a bunch of guests on today. You can see some of them on the side. More will be brought on as we go. Uh, just quickly, this is our uh, live podcast. We do this 7.30 every Wednesday. Please tune in 7.30 every Wednesday. If you're watching us now on YouTube, Facebook, feel free to, to click share. Let's get more people in here live. We'll be taking uh, questions, comments, if they're good, and sometimes if they're not. So feel free to, to get involved in the chat and banter away and give us your blunt feedback if, you, if you'd like to. So just uh, quickly introducing who we've got here to start off today. Uh, we've got our lead Senate candidate for New South Wales, John Ruddock. We've got uh, another Senate candidate from New South Wales here, John Lata. As you can see, this room is full of Johns. I'm going to do what I normally do and refer to John Ruddock as JR to make it a little more simple. Um, and of course, we have our lead Senate candidate from Tasmania, uh, John Field. Uh, sorry, Topher <laughs> Field, uh, although I'm sure he's got a John in there somewhere, probably. But um, welcome, gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Good evening, John. I've got, I've, I've got the future uh, New South Wales Liberal Democrat Senator here as well from a uh, her sister's away at camp this week, so she's sitting in all night tonight with me. Sorry, my internet may be playing up here. Um, look, we'll start, I think, uh, throwing around there for a bit of updates from our Senate candidates for what's been happening in, in their world in politics. Uh, I think we'll start with Sofa. I know you've been on the road. You can see it's not your usual background there. Uh, what's been happening down in, in Tassie land? First things first, I just want to dispel this disgraceful rumour that Tasmania is cold. I think it's just a, a really vicious thing that mainlanders say, and it's completely untrue. Um, I'm, I'm currently outside of the um, caravan park cabin. I've got an amazing team. Of, well, there's actually 14 of us on the road and then a bunch more working with me, and uh, they're just having dinner inside. I've stepped outside where it's a little bit quieter. Um, look, things are actually really amazing on the ground here. We just had 50,000 flyers go out. I'm in Launceston at the moment. We had 50,000 flyers get collected by volunteers yesterday. They're going into letterboxes right now. I've had my team in Launceston today. They've delivered over 10,000 flyers into letterboxes in the last two days. Things are really, really gaining momentum. People getting in touch with me. They want signs. They want call flutes. They want flyers. I'm getting more and more opportunities with uh, with radio and other, uh, other sort of avenues to get the word out. So there is no doubt that uh, as people are kind of discovering the Liberal Democrats, momentum is really building. A couple of suggestions have come through on the chat already, Topher. The, uh, if you're feeling cold, it's been suggested you try some whiskey and a cigar. Apparently, that'll uh, that'll cure what ails you. Um, and, well, and, well, you know, uh, somebody put up on Twitter yesterday, uh, according to the various states, what political parties are, but have, have the highest number of uh, Google searches. Now, in, oh, Tasman yeah. in Tasmania, uh, Topher, just looking at it now, um, you're not coming number two in Google mm -hmm. searches. Okay? You're twenty three percent. So you're doing something right. Now this is this is far from conclusive data. Uh, this will be obviously people who are checking us out for the first time. I mean, like your labor eighteen percent of people have Googled the Tasmanian Labor Party in the last week, and twenty three mm -hmm. percent have Googled the Liberal Democrats. Now, obviously, people know Labor a lot more. However, it's clearly an encouraging indicator that people are taking an interest. So you're doing something right. Can I add, John, we're, um, we're actually, I'm watching that number with interest because in another week's time, I'd love to see how it's shifted. We didn't have our flyers until yesterday. So right. there's an awful lot of people that we wanted to reach and we couldn't. So over the next week, with tens of thousands, actually, including Hobart, I'm down in Hobart tomorrow. We've got another 80,000 flyers waiting for us down there. Over the next week, more than 100,000 flyers, 150, nearly 1,000 flyers are going to hit people's letterboxes. I'd be very curious to see what happens to that search number then. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, Topher, the for the Tassie fans watching uh, here now, do you actually know where you're going to be over the course of the next 10 days? Can you give people a hint to know where they can come and try and track you down and throw eggs or congratulate you? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm heading straight from Lonnie to Hobart tomorrow, and uh, we're hitting the ground hard in, in Hobart. There, I will have a meet and greet where people can come, meet me, uh, meet my team, and pick up flyers, pick up core flutes, that sort of thing. And uh, we're, we're really pushing very, very hard. The other place that people will be able to meet me or two, I will be speaking at the um, the rally on the 14th in Hobart, meeting at the Cenotaph and marching to the Parliament House Gardens at midday. Uh, and then I'll be at the stand in the park in Richmond on the Sunday as well. So 
those are going to be good opportunities if you'd, uh, if you'd love to come by and say hi. And you've been enjoying the road? This is just an incredible... I've, I've spent most of the last week up in the northwest, up in the seat of Braddon, uh, within sight of Mount Roland, and it's just incredible. The scenery here is comparable. The only comparison I can make is to, to parts of Europe, some of the greener parts of Europe, uh, and potentially to New Zealand as well. They're, they're the only... There's nothing on the mainland that is comparable to that combination of the ocean, the rolling green hills, and then some really beautiful mountains, all in the same. You just look left and right, and you just you, you couldn't take a bad photograph here. Um, Catherine Gibson says in the chat, it was good to meet you yesterday. Uh, no idea who that is, but apparently... Nice to meet you, Catherine. And uh, similar to New Zealand, so similar to the Australian seventh state that we haven't yet conquered, but uh, stay tuned for more news once we take government. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, JR, how, is, how are things in the world of uh, New South Wales politics, the Lib Dems and your campaign? Well, look, just to finish up on Tasmania, look, you know, we had Australia's greatest prime minister, greatest libertarian prime minister was Joe Lyons yes. Yes. from Tasmania. So let's hope, let's hope, uh, Topher, that we can have a, a, a revival of John Lyonism, starting starting with your Senate from Tasmania. I'm working on. Well, just just don't tell everyone what political party uh, Joe Lyons was representing at the time. Yeah, that's right. Yes, let's, let's leave that out. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> well, just to, just the, the only connection is the name. Okay, I think yeah. Joe Lyons. If he was alive today, he would be a out and proud Liberal Democrat. Absolutely. I agree. Um, <clears throat> well, look, I had uh, a little bit of a rural tour. I think Pete Rothwell is going to join us uh, soon. And uh, we went to Wagga. They've got this massive, massive inland um, Wagga Cup. It's called the Gold Cup. But it's like, I think it's the biggest non-metropolitan um, sort of racehorse day. It was huge. And uh, did, 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 did some good media down there. Then on Saturday with Dean McRae and a couple of other good, good people, we drove to... Um, to Dubbo, then we caught into three towns along the way. Now these are small towns. These are sort of five to ten thousand people. These are Parks, Forbes, West Wyalong. Yeah, yeah. A handful of people came out to see, see us at each of them. Yeah, and they were very good people. You know, they knew all about the Freedom Manifesto. They were very much, you know, very keen and liberal Democrats. Then uh, turned up at, at uh, Dubbo within within an hour, within an hour and a half. I've done three major interviews. Um, and then, then Pete had a terrific event in the evening. About 40 people turned up, all very good people. You know, there is a, you know, Pete, look, in the country, if you took a random poll of people in the street and you said, who is your local member? About 70% of them are going to know the name of their state or federal local member. Now, if you go into the city, it's the reverse. About 30% would know their local member. Uh, so people in the country have got generally more interest in politics and definitely more common sense. So I think that's going to be, you know, well, we'll see where where, where, where our votes come from in 10 days' time. Uh, then I went to Melbourne yesterday, <clears throat> uh, there and back for one day, for, so I went out of the state. First time I've been in Melbourne for a long time. And uh, and we had a we had a candidates debate um, with hosted by Rebel News with Avi and Rukshan, terrific guys. So I, I think that there was a two and a half hour debate. I think David Limbrick did a Victorian debate the night before. So that's up. Arby says it's going to be up soonish. So that was, look, very disappointingly, the UAP candidate did not turn up. And I don't think anybody really knows the UAP candidate from New South Wales. They're very, they're aware who Clive is, they're aware who Craig is, but they don't know who their New South Wales Senate candidate is. Now, he's a nice guy. I've met him once and he was very friendly, terrific guy. Okay. Um, now, I think there should be more scrutiny on, on some of these policies, these 3% home loans, et cetera. Uh, <clears throat> so to, uh, but look, besides that, the campaign in general, the national campaign, look, there's no question that Scott Morrison enjoys campaigning. Albanese's confidence was shot, uh, you know, but, you know, the I just feel like Australia has made a decision that they want a change of government. Uh, despite Albanese having a bad week last week, you know, the two big polls, the nine polls and the news poll, both showed a hardening in support of changing this government. Now, uh, you know, it's, uh, look, I, and I think that every day that goes by, we've seen, you know, international stock markets crash and other things crash, you know, not crash, but, you know, not healthy in the last few days. I think whoever wins this government, when, wins this election uh, at a national level is, you know, they've got very, very difficult economic conditions coming their way. It, the COVID chickens are coming home to roost. Okay, now, now Albanese's from the left of the Labor Party. 
Bob Hawke had been from the left of the Labor Party. He sort of, you know, originally. Uh, now, let's hope if Albanese is the Prime Minister that he does a hawk and that is betray everything the Labor Party ever stood for in terms of economic reform. Now, is he going to do it? I doubt it. I think he's going to be more like James Scullin, who was the Prime Minister for three years, 1929 to 1931, and it was the most chaotic government in Australian history. Uh, you know, poor old James Scullin, two days after he gets sworn in, we have the Wall Street crashes, like the Great Crash of 1929, and it was absolutely chaotic. Now, let's hope it's not as bad as that, but that's the measuring stick I've got in my mind at this stage. To his credit, though, James Scullin uh, did choose a, a very admirable deputy so that when he was overseas for a while uh, during the crash, his deputy took over, who is the aforementioned Joe Lyons, uh, so who then eventually left the Labor Party. Uh, but there you go. There's a small piece of history. Of course, the, the party that's going to take government after this election, uh, we, we have more than 76 candidates running, so 100 candidates across the lower house. So there is still a theoretical possibility we can form government. You gentlemen can't be our PM because you're all running for the Senate, but uh, we've got a few people coming in soon who'll be good for that. There was a question that came in while uh, a minute or two ago. Paul Stevens asked, uh, wh what we'll be doing with preferences. I think, I don't know if you've got that question. We've got Rob McCarthy sitting in the background, uh, everyone. So if you hear us asking a question of Rob and you don't see any Robs on your screen, uh, I'm referring to uh, Rob McCarthy in the background, helping us with all the technology. Rob, you don't have that comment from Paul Stevens? Easy to hand? Anyway, it, it asked if we're preferencing the Liberals. Quick answer, uh, immediately I saw our, our Queensland State President answered it straight away saying that, and this is very true, and this is, should always be the first answer, you control your preferences. The parties don't control it. We've got that on our how to vote cards. Even when we're making recommendations, it says, this is just a guide. You control your preferences. So that needs to be repeated uh, again and again. But uh, but secondly, yes, we do have how to vote cards. Uh, on those how to vote cards, uh, in the Senate, we go to the UAP, then One Nation, uh, and then there's a, there's a few others in there, uh, Federation Party, what have you. This is something else that some people miss. In the lower house, if you have a how to vote card, you there's no optional preferential. You can't just vote one. You have to complete the full ballot, which means by definition, you have to either put liberal in front of labor or labor in front of liberal. And if you put liberal in front of labor, people call that preferencing the liberals. And if you put labor in front of liberal, vice versa. So you can't really uh, avoid that too much unless you run what's called split tickets, which is to tell people there's two different options, uh, pick your own poison. So what we've actually done uh, in a lot of seats across the country is we've run split tickets. There are a bunch of seats where we have then put Liberal in front of Labor, and there's a couple of seats where we put uh, Labor in front of Liberal. So there is no one simple answer. We are not a feeder party for any other party. We are not a party you can just take for granted or assume that we're just going to do what's easy for another party. So the, there's a lot of split tickets. Uh, we have gone to more Liberal than Labor, uh, as you might guess, from our principles and the principles the Liberal Party used to pretend they held. Uh, but, yeah. Can I just so, say... That the comment from Russell just there. Russell is in Tasmania. He he took matters into his own hands when we didn't have our core flutes, and he blew up one of the flyers that I had created. He just downloaded the file off the internet, blew it up, and has put it up on his fence as a massive sign. So Russell, uh, yes, you control your preferences. We might have to uh, might have to add that to your fence, mate. Um, Mr. K asks another question here, which is a different question, right? So this is uh, about what we would do in a hung parliament. So there's a couple of parts to that. That is a different question to preferences, right? So preferences, you can't uh, take us for granted. Uh, with, with a hung parliament, uh, it's that has to be hung in the lower house, right? So we, we, we expect, we're hoping to have, you know, a good solid six senators or, or somewhere. Uh, who knows what we're going to get? But uh, we're primarily targeting the, the Senate. Uh, and if you get senators on the crossbench, that's, we don't control the hung parliament. We can't decide who forms government. But we've got a bunch of good lower house candidates and some of them are in with a fighting chance. So if some of them get over the line, uh, then they could have a, an influence in a hung parliament. Uh, and the truth is we as a party can't actually tell them what to do. It is up to those people. But I can tell you here, it's uh, just looking at the, the two options on the table. They can both come to us and get into a bidding war about who will be more libertarian. That would be great. Imagine Hawke versus Howard in a bidding war who could out libertarian each other. Um, it's my strong suspicion at the end of the day, the liberals probably are going to be offering a government closer to what we want than Labor. Uh, I can't guarantee what other people will do, but that's my strong suspicion, is that it's far more likely that Liberals will offer a, a less bad option than Labor if we control the hung parliament. Um, anyway, so I've taken a few too many questions there. I'll, I'll keep rolling. 
Uh, I'll keep reading the questions, but I'll, I'll keep rolling here to ask uh, John Larter, the other John uh, in the table, our uh, number two on the Senate ticket for New South Wales. Uh, Mr. Larter, how has the campaign been treating you? Oh, well, well look, we've been busy. We've been uh, involved in a lot of Zooms and uh, trying to keep the freedom stuff uh, happening, which is, I think, very important to uh, our momentum going forward. But I agree with what... Uh, JR said that you know the 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 polls are essentially indicating that Labor has a pretty strong grip on uh, on on government as as it currently stands. So you know I think that's a real opportunity for us because I, I think the strength for us is in the Senate, and you know this is an opportunity for us to say to uh, disenchanted Liberal voters, especially, uh, well here's your opportunity to keep uh, the Labor Party at bay because you know if they get in they're going to be a complete and utter menace menace to. Uh, you know anything so we need to make sure that we've got uh, people on the ground in that senate that uh, can rebuke what's uh, what what's going to be coming so i think that's uh, you know part of our got to be part of our strategy going forward to say well look if if labor's going to win you know th this is this is a really good option to be voting for the liberal democrats uh, you know in the senate um, I read a very disturbing article um, yesterday or this morning uh, about the possibility of if Labor wins, what's the chance they can also take the Senate? Of course, Labor itself obviously can't take the Senate. So realistically, what we mean is the, the Labor Greens coalition. But the mm -hmm. Labor Greens coalition now have 35 uh, votes in the Senate. You need 39 to control the Senate to be able to pass legislation. So they need four more. They have uh, 35 when they lost the election. So presumably their numbers would go up after this election. Uh, I don't think they'll make 39. But by God, we better hope they don't. So, yeah, make sure we beat the Greens into those last seats, everyone, uh, and make sure that the, the Labor and Greens aren't able to pass legislation unless they get support from other parties. 100%. And, look, there's been a couple of other things. The first thing that I'll mention is uh, in the seat where Dean McRae's actually running in the Riverina. We, we had a discussion about this this afternoon, but the national broadcaster, the ABC, is running a forum that they're uh, transmitting live from the Gundagai Services Club. But uh, the irony is the national broadcaster uh, is only allowing the three uh, uh, major parties to participate, so the Greens, Labor and Michael McCormack, the former Deputy Prime Minister and himself a, uh, a former editor of a newspaper. Um, so it seems uh, quite ludicrous to me and I'm sure the public that you know you can have an event held by the national broadcaster that's uh, not allowing all the candidates to to have a say um I just think it's crazy but anyway we'll, 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 well, what, we'll what's particularly out. outrageous about that is at the last federal election when the UAP didn't get many votes nationally they got more votes in Riverina this is Dean McRae's seat they got more votes than the Greens Mm. But the ABC, the national broadcaster, publicly funded, says it's more important to have the Greens along than it is the UAP. Now, surely there's 10 candidates. Surely they can fit them all in, you know, being a public broadcaster. But no, no, no. Their preference for the Greens is on display. i got to mm. say that that does really show the point. Some people accuse the ABC of, of having a pro-Labor bias. And I think that is entirely unfair to the ABC. They clearly have a pro-Greens bias. Yes. Uh, so Labor is their second choice only if they, uh, and, and who knows how well the Socialist Alliance does in, in ABC polling, but it's probably not insignificant. Uh, uh, and look, the other thing, John, um, that people should know is that uh, good old APRA, the uh, Health Practitioners Regula Regulatory Authority, which is uh, essentially uh, an arm of the government, um, has got its tentacles out again. Uh, they've sent uh, the Liberal Democrats and myself a threatening letter uh, this week, essentially uh, demanding that uh, I be uh, called out as a suspended paramedic on any paraphernalia that we put out uh, and on the websites and, and the like, uh, because uh, as far as they're concerned, I, I'm suspended and no longer registered as a paramedic and they're entitled to uh, you know, claim that title and it's an offence under national law and they're threatening us with a uh, $120,000 fine as a corporation uh, and a $60,000 personal fine for each offence for me and three years imprisonment. So I, I think that just demonstrates the lengths that these grubs are going to to smear us out. Uh, Brad Hazard, you know, he's the one that appoints these people onto these boards at APRA, uh, along with all these other uh, uh, health ministers around the around the states. I mean, it's it's deplorable what these people are up to. and. And the sooner that uh, ARPA and all these other grubs are dismantled, uh, 
for the better and there should be a royal commission as we've been calling for into this mess so they are saying john so this is state coercion and intimidation are they are saying that you on any liberal democrat uh, sort of uh posters or websites or anything we need to refer to you as a former paramedic is that correct that's, yeah that's correct even if it's just a picture of me in uniform that's that's deemed to be uh, in breach of the national law. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, John Lata. <laughs> There's too many Johns. Uh, but uh, the, the, your situation is still ongoing. You, you are fighting the suspensions uh, and it's it, it hasn't actually been resolved yet. So we don't actually know the answer yet. But you're no, well, required that's... now under threat of a hefty fine to, to only use, to give one version of events, basically. I mean, at the end of the day, there's two two matters still on foot. There's a uh, matter before the Supreme Court of Appeal uh, that uh, senior counsel uh, are fighting, and there's also the matter before the NCAT uh, Review Tribunal in relation to the suspension. So, I mean, they're completely out of order. These people. I mean, they're they're just bullies. Uh, this is this is just um, you know state based uh, threats and coercion, and uh, you know they just they just don't want. Uh, you know the 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 narrative um, to change from the 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 one they're depicting. Is there is there any light at the end of the tunnel in terms of your field, which is the paramedics? I mean, because because I am getting mixed messages from the Perite government about ending mandates for people. But is there any what what is where are we up to with paramedics? No hope at all. No hope of any any clinician whatsoever returning to the workforce in New South Wales employed by the government. And the reason I say that is because despite the fact that you can have 100 people waiting uh, at any one time on the triple O line for an ambulance because there isn't any or, uh, you know, there's no nursing staff in hospitals and they're having to close down emergency departments in rural areas, especially like at Batlow, Cootamundra uh, and the like in New South Wales, uh, the reality is that uh, Brad Hazard knew that this uh, health order was going to end at some stage and therefore the uh, Secretary of Health, uh, prior to her departure, wrote into the policies of New South Wales Health that to continue her employment or to be employed uh, under the New South Wales Health banner, you had to be double vaccinated or uh, it was game over. So despite the fact the health order is finished, uh, you're still required as a policy uh, to be double vaccinated, uh, and that's the end of the story. A comment here by James Goff saying, if we have to refer to people as former all the time, then the Liberal Labor Coalition of Mediocrity should be referred to as the uh, former decent humans. I think that was the comment. It was taken away too quickly, Rob. But um, can, I, um, can I comment on a, uh, a comment that came out just before that? Um, somebody, Barlow, um, commenting on uh, whether it's appropriate to be calling for a royal commission because they cost money. And the LDP have, in my opinion, rightly opposed numerous different royal commissions over the journey. Uh, we've been around for 21 years. Um, Nick, the, the royal commissions exist for a reason. Uh, and in my opinion, what's happened over the last two years does justify the spending on one. Where we're opposed is royal commissions can sometimes be bandied around almost as a, a debating tactic in parliament where the parties are just sort of threatening each other for, with almost, it's a, think of it like a frivolous lawsuit. We're definitely opposed to pointless or politically motivated royal commissions. That is an absolute waste and misuse of taxpayer money. Uh, I would make the argument that what's happened over the last two years is a perfect candidate for a royal commission to, in order to lay all the facts on the table and force governments to reveal the so-called science that they supposedly based all their decisions on. Mm. I agree. Um, I, th I think at this point we might take the opportunity to segue. Uh, John Larder, unless you have any other final words of, of wisdom or insight for us. Uh, look, just how, are enjoying, how are look, you enjoying look, the campaign? Look, I'm loving it. Yeah, look, I'm. Uh, I, look, it's it's not really ch it's it, it's not really changed as much. I'm still just out there, sort of, uh, um, you know, hitting the pavements in in relation to a lot of the freedom um, circumstances that we find ourselves in. But uh, uh, coming from a you know a liberal background and having run as a candidate uh, previously for the Liberal Party, you know, I'm not. Uh, it's not something I'm not familiar with. So look, I'm I'm really enjoying it, and I'm. You know, enjoying uh, you know working with uh, John Ruddick, who I think is an exemplary uh, um, lead candidate, and uh, you know I'm really looking forward to to making sure that uh, you know at the very minimum that uh, we get all the lead candidates uh, elected, uh, you know, on the 21st because it's just so important, and uh, you know I think it's the most crucial election that we'll we'll have since federation, 
uh, and everyone needs to get to the rallies on the 14th this coming Saturday, and, uh, and they, they, that's, you know, that's where we need to be. Sydney, yeah, well, Sydney Town Hall midday, and I think you're speaking, John, later at the end of the March, is that right? I, I, yeah, they'll probably probably find me a megaphone to give okay. Hazard. Yeah. Well, it is great having you uh, on the team, uh, John Ladder. It's uh, I, I hear consistently good things from lots of quarters corners of the country. So it's great having you in the in the fight with us. We really appreciate it. And thanks for joining thanks. us this evening. Great to be in the trenches with you guys. Good on you. Good on you, John. Cheers. Good to see you, mate. So we're going to uh, change up the pace a little bit here, bring on uh, two other candidates, uh, a couple of our lower house candidates. So, you know, potential potential future prime ministers of a Liberal Democrat government. Uh, Rob, have you, uh, have you found a way to get uh, Lisa and Pete into the room? Um, there we go. A room full of five. So we got um, uh, Pete Rothwell, our candidate for Parks uh, in, I think it's the biggest electorate in New South Wales. And Lisa Tazewell, our candidate for Parramatta uh, in in Sydney, obviously, Sydney West. Uh, so welcome. Uh, welcome to the show. Hello. Good evening. Fantastic to be here. I, uh, I see Topher's gone black, but uh, in, in his, his screen. Topher, you're looking particularly good like that. Oh, no, you've ruined it. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I ruined it. I, I, I saw that uh, my team who are uh, living out of a bus at the moment uh, have lit a bonfire. So I'm heading down there to seek out a little bit of warmth. But I want to reiterate what I said at the start of the show. These vicious rumours about Tasmania being cold are completely false, okay? Don't let my behaviour or my clothing tell you otherwise. Uh, can, can we see the bus? Is the bus near the? It'd be good to see it if there's light. It probably isn't. But um, yeah, no. I'll, when I get there, I'll see if I can actually show you anything or not. Anyway, cool. And while you before you're doing that, then uh, let's go around. Uh, I, I'm seeing you from left to right as as Pete comes up first. So I'll go to Pete first. Uh, how are things on the campaign trail? What's it What's it been like in the last uh, couple of weeks? And I guess especially the last couple of days. Now that uh, yeah, pre polling has started. No, it's been absolutely insane, absolutely flat out. Um, I couldn't have imagined the level of interest that we've had. Um, I think people absolutely yearning for some good um, centre-right people and um, I think we're filling that void. They're getting a bit sick of the nationals out here and, yeah, we're really making some headway. Um, I think actually the national member out here who's been out here forever, um, he must see us as the threat because had a debate last Friday night and... The only person he attacked during the whole debate was myself um, when he had perfectly good targets in Labor and the Greens. And, yeah, and interestingly enough, he couldn't attack me on any policy. So thank you to the fantastic policy team. Um, all he could attack me on was that minor parties couldn't make a difference and that I don't have the experience. So anyway, everyone in the room noticed that and went, well, we all know who he's scared of. So he didn't go after yeah. your haircut. That wasn't the strategy. No, that's right. That's right. So, no, it was it was excellent. Great weekend down like uh, when JR came up. Um, fantastic event, and it just um, shows our message. It's got some real uh, breakthrough. There's the quality of people that were there, like all business leaders, leaders of the community, and yeah, the message is getting out, and, and it must be getting out. We had quite a surreal day today, where for weeks we've been reaching out. <laughs> to the ABC and they haven't wanted to know anything about me, didn't want to know me, no interviews, no nothing. And today, three separate ABC radio stations are booking interviews, plus doing wow. recordings for news today. So a big change. There must be, I was a little bit worried that they had some rather revealing pictures of me or something that had crept out <laughs> into the into the world. But, but no, it, it, it appears that, yeah, something's hitting home and, and maybe we are making some real inroads out here. Or yeah, driving, driving, into, are out there somewhere. Dri driving into Dubbo yeah. uh, from coming from Parks last Saturday, there's like uh, probably 20 Peter Rothwell signs, uh, and, and there was probably three for the National Party. And it, you know, look, and there, there's a big solicitor firm right in the right in the guts of Dubbo, which you know, and that firm is you know, super duper pro. Pete Rothwell and a lot of locals. Look, this, this is a this is a campaign brochure from Michael McCormick, which is actually the adjoining seat for the National Party. This is twelve pages of just absolutely nothing but saying funding that he's got for the electorate. So down to things like, oh, we helped buy a picnic table. 
you know, just just it like there would have to be at least a hundred and it, and this is what, what what Pete was saying with his mat, you know, which is meant to be a safe mat seat. This is this is their message. Vote for me, I will go to Canberra and I will extract as much money out of Canberra and, and bring it back to this electorate. Now if all 151 electorates do that, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go broke pretty quick. Well, they're, they're, all of them are doing that, and we are going broke pretty quick. So that is uh, yes. uh, appropriate wording. I, I think there's a, a some sort of word that has to do with um, uh, pig meat and barrels that might uh, describe uh, what you've described there. By the way, um, you'll notice Topher has the uh, the, the the campfire uh, in his vision now. Topher, if, if you want to stroll back to the bus at some stage, we'll then uh, see if we can. Yeah, mate. I'm driving. Someone on the team has kindly volunteered a torch. Uh, Sorry, just Rob, gonna try. Yeah, if Rob, if you're there, thank you. Um. So I'll just follow the torch light there. So we've got LDP logos uh, and more freedom, uh, less government, more freedom, uh, and then my ugly mug, uh, then more, less government, more freedom, Liberal Democratic Party, and then uh, my logo and the LDP logo. On the back, you won't be able to see it, but on the back I have the quotes, um, Nappies and politicians should be changed often and for the same reasons. Uh, let's just, we're just getting light on it now. There you go. That's a great line. And uh, yeah, so we've got the branding all over it. It's been a really good billboard. We've had a lot of people coming up to us wanting to talk about it. Uh, people really responding very well, thank you, to the less government, more freedom uh, approach and the slogan. Uh, all of the policies are going down really well, so I want to add my congratulations to the policy team. Uh, I think they've done an outstanding job, and I think uh, people are desperate for an alternative. They're desperate for someone that's telling them something different, not just you know, more of the same old, same old, because I think increasingly people are recognising that the same old is the problem. Yes, indeed. And look, we had uh, chatting to some of the candidates last week, uh, and they were telling me they, they had a story of... Um, someone they were door knocking and the person said all right what are you going to give me what, what are you offering all of the others are offering something they kind of just said it dismissively over the shoulder and our, our candidate uh she she said uh I'm, I'm i'm offering you nothing i'm offering you nothing except that we will be responsible with the money you give us uh, and that got his attention like that is something new they expect you to be pork barreling they expect you to have a 12 page 12 page brochure of all of the the trinkets and handouts they'll give you for free and we come to them and say we aren't offering you any new trinkets uh, we are too much in debt. That is not responsible economic management. So that is that is not what everyone wants to hear. Uh, it's what they need to hear. But it is certainly something refreshing and new. So um, we've got that going for them. By the way, there was a question that came up for you, Pete, uh, while you were chatting earlier. Someone asked, uh, "Is it uh, Brendan? Didn't catch his surname." Asked Pete, "If you don't, if you don't win this time around, which of course we all know you will, but if you don't, uh, is there a chance you're going to stick around and run again uh, in, in future elections?" Uh, and they were very much in favour of the I idea. I will definitely run again. Yeah, I'll definitely run again. Look, politics was something that I never thought I'd get into, and I wish I didn't have to get into it. But let's face it, the uh, so-called centre-right of politics, which is now, to me, way over to the left somewhere, um, it means that, yeah, we have to stand up. We've got to fight. And, yeah, so I will definitely be continuing the fight. Terrific. And... Speaking of people in the fight on the ground, uh, Lisa, uh, you've been uh, up to some fun and games lately, I hear. Yeah, well, Parramatta seems to be the place to be. We've had Kevin Rudd here almost every second day. We've had Scott Morrison. Um, we've had Clive and Craig doing um, doing Meet the Candidate events at um, the Ridges Hotel. So it's, so it's actually quite interesting. But what's also quite interesting is we've had um, we've seen some real kind of coercive tactics at the at the polling booths. So we've seen things like where candidate or potential voters are um, trying to get out of their car or walk in, and they'll be sidelined. Well, there'll be two people kind of squishing them in, like maybe the Labor Party, and they'll be walking them right up to the polling booth. And we have to like almost it's like dodgeball. We have to try and get in there and try and get our flyers in so that they know that there's an alternative. So, um, so we've had a bit of that. And I have to say, one of our candidates that's running, um, not us for an independent party, is probably infamous for having a fight at one of the polling booths. So, so I'm thinking this is probably all quite new for both Andrew Charlton and uh, Maria. Not quite, not quite used to politics Parramatta style <laughs> so um, people are very very passionate 
um, about the politics. So, um, but what it, but what's also been really interesting about it is um, I've I've actually had you know both Liberal and Labor actually coming up to me. I've had um, I, I gave a I gave a talk actually last night at an event um, with Parramatta Chamber of Commerce. And then after that event, one of the Labor councillors, when she was out today giving out flyers, she was actually telling everybody, to, she goes, she's a good girl, give her number two, Labor one and Lisa two. And and then I've, <laughs> and I was sharing it with John, I've had the Liberal Party coming over going, you want to come back to us? <laughs> so, um, so, so I'm going, aha, uh-huh. and I was like, no, nah, I'm not going back to any of you crazies. So, um, so but, it, but it's been really good and it's been really good, um, the conversations I've been having. And, um, and one of the things that I've found really effective when I've been speaking at events, and depending on the event that I'm speaking at, but at the Chamber of Commerce event, um, you know, so I, sh- I share a little bit about my history um, for, which of those who don't know, like my father's Indonesian Muslim and my mother's Christian and they got married right after the white Australia policy. And then I went to Granville South High School and ended up being a director at Macquarie. And one of the things that I talk about, I go, that's the Australian story, right? And, and we've really got to build our future. And, we, and, you know, and I actually think we've really failed our future. We've really failed what we've done. And what, and and I think by taking people back, especially as business people, in the conversation of what life was like, it makes them click and go, God, how far we've moved from our values, you know, how how far we've moved from. Um, and so that's why I share a little bit of that story. And then it gives me an opportunity to say, you know, you know, we're, where we failed, we're like, you know, we've saddled our next generation with lots of debt where, you know, if when we've got people that would rather don't want to get out of bed, like a 21, you should be like desperate to get out there. And and we've created this environment and, you know, we've failed. And when I've, and when I've had those, um, when I've spoken like that and just been able to take people back to remember, it's been quite powerful. And I've had lots of people come up and speak with me afterwards and want to find out more about us. So I'm hoping um, the positive, you know, the kind of the campaigning, not just, you know, we're just personally, I'm just exhausted of the negative, you know, and um, I just find that the angry and the negative is like, oh, for God's sake, give it a rest, right? And so I actually, so for me, I've just changed tact. So when everybody's sounding cranky and angry and attacking and I'm going like, let's build a better future, right? And this is the way to do it. So that's what I found to be quite positive. And the, so local me- the local yeah. media has been reasonably friendly, Lisa. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I've had some nice stories and I've had um, I've had some nice stories. And to be fair, right, you know, um, you know, maybe I'm a bit of anomaly in Parramatta, so maybe that's why if I was in the eastern suburbs or somewhere a bit, you know, a bit more affluent than people, I'd probably be like everybody else, but I'm not. Like, so, are, you um, saying, are you saying that you're a bit of a, an anomaly in, in Parramatta because you're one of the few people that actually lives in Parramatta that's running for it, uh, unlike the... Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, I have to tell you, it's really quite funny. So, so my mum. So, for some of those who know, she's any Lib Dem event that we can go to. She's like our little mascot, and I think she's even in Gareth some of Gareth's photos because she's always got the, the hat, the t-shirt on. And she just like took on Andrew Charlton the other day. <laughs> like, so, so because because what we're finding is, I was saying, you know, we've got two. They come out and they basically block us. And my my mum said something to him and he said something back and she went for the jugular and, and so but that's what we've had to do you know we've had to you know we've had there's been a, a lot of kind of strong words especially with the uap and um julian who's running he's he's been really good and he's been really strong and we've actually all had to kind of get together and basically say to labor like you know back off right you like now this is this is coercion right this is coercion and collusion right the way um some of the parties are working so we've said um, it's just that's just not the way we operate, and um, and so it's been, you know what I mean? Like, so we're just we're just really watching it, and we're just calling out the AEC every time we see it. But um, but I'm sure it's quite eye opening. And I did actually say to Andrew Charlton, I said, "Oh, so how did you find Marylands?" And so if anybody I don't know, knows Marylands, it's um, you'd never know there was a pandemic on a Marylands, right? Nobody, nobody, and somebody also assured me that it was probably the gun capital of Australia, and not for the right reasons. And um, and so when I said, "Oh, how did you find Marylands?" and it was a bit like interesting <laughs> so i thought that, i thought that was a great comment <laughs> so no, no, 
Sorry. There's a, there's a high profile guy out there running, Steve Christo, who's an independent, yeah. who was all over Sky and stuff uh, during the lockdowns. I think he's yeah. is a local councillor or was a local councillor. Now he's giving he's pre, he's and he's running a pretty active campaign and he's yeah. practicing us number one in the Senate on his how to vote, isn't he? Um, yes, he is. He is. But this is. But this is. To be fair, like, and he's an absolute seasoned politician, right? And like, he so you never quite know what he's thinking. But he's also the same guy that is the one that got into a bit of a um, a, a fight that's on YouTube at one oh, of the really? polls. Yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah. everyone so, watching us. But, but I have to tell you, but I to, that's, that's Parramatta politics. We had, we had the basically Maria telling um, the Labor guys to just basically she was almost screaming at him, saying "Get away from me!" And yeah. Um, and yeah, it all gets really in your face. It's quite entertaining, really. <laughs> People watching this on on YouTube now, please do not click away to go and find that YouTube video. Oh, I don't know. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, don't, don't, don't. And then, and he's then, really then passionate. Can, he's really passionate then, about the area, and that's. And I think that's what it, I think that's that's probably what spilled over in that in that um in that kind of in that yeah well we can leave that one we can leave that one for the the archives uh, archives I used to speak England um I'll leave that one for the archives but uh, it is true there's a lot of antics that go on at the at the polling booth that uh, you, you may not see at all uh, I don't yeah. think most people want to hear the inside baseball but it, it can be a bit of uh, argy bargy and people can get up to some some dodgy shit there sometimes. So uh, look, yeah. what that really means, this is a great opportunity to do a call out now. Um, th there is uh, safety in numbers, strength in numbers at, at the polling booths. It would be great for us to have, uh, we're actually doing pretty well covering the booths. Uh, and there's a lot of booths we're covering where we don't see many other minor parties, but it would be great to have more people there, uh, not just covering more booths, but more people at the booths we're already covering. Uh, it's just more fun that way. If you can go down with a group of three or four people, and if they've only got uh, one or two there now, you and a friend go down there. It just makes the whole day or the afternoon or the evening more fun uh, and more effective. So please, if you've got some free time, we're in the home stretch now, 10 days left. You can see down the bottom, the Chiron there. Thank you, Rob, ldp.org.au slash volunteer. Uh, or get in touch with your local candidate if you know them or you can find them on, on Facebook or other social media. It'd be great to get you out there. Uh, get involved. Get, be a part of it. We'd love your vote, but we want more than that. We want you to... Um, to uh, trick your family or convince your family uh, and then actually come down, uh, join in the team, hand out, hand out for us. So um, and Tim Molesworth says yeah, they need more right. volunteers down at the polling booth. It, it is fun if you go there with a group. Uh, if you're yeah. there on your own, it's a bit... Uh, a bit more precarious. But I've said it's fun. You meet lots of people. You know, I've I've spoken to I've spoken I've actually found the camaraderie even amongst all the different parties. You know, it's a great opportunity to kind of chat and ask people why they've chosen to support this party, and they'll speak to you about that. And I've actually had people say to me that they they'll put us. You know, they never considered us before, and after having an opportunity to speak with them, then they would consider us as like you know, you know, as their second preference or whatever they choose, right? Yeah. And after a few hours on the hustings, you'll develop a sense of humour. So you'll start yeah. coming up with new ways of trying to give out the how to vote cards. Pete, have you been out on pre-polling at all? And and if so, how have you found it? Um, no, I haven't. Uh, but good news is, I was just the test came back negative. I, okay. <laughs> I had a bit of the <laughs> flu. Wait, and just to confirm, that means you're not pregnant. the other night. I'm not pregnant. I'm not pregnant. <laughs> um, but. <laughs> So there'll be no chest feeding from me. Um, no, but um, I will be back out there. I've got had a fair few people on it, and I must say that country people uh, must just be way too polite because I'm not getting any saucy stories <laughs> out of our um, pre-polling booths. Um, yeah, too many ladies and gentlemen out here. But, yeah, no, it's it's definitely ramping up, and, yeah, next week will be a big week. And, look, if you uh, at, at the end of... Next week, uh, if you want to share in the glory, then the right type, right thing to do now is to share in some of the work uh, so that you've earned that glory. So uh, please get in there. Um, quick question without notice for both of you, uh, Pete, Lisa, uh, let's assume you both get elected uh, and we get 74 other people with you. Which one of you two gets to be the prime minister? <laughs> well. <laughs> maybe, I, I, this, maybe that's a question for the 2025 you, election. It's, uh, no, you should be... Um, you should be, we should be discussing how it gets settled. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm we'll, sure we'll, we can come we'll up with some that. fun ideas. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll solve that once we're not live anymore. Actually, um, I've got it. 
<laughs> the first show I went to after I was announced as a candidate was a Mandoran show, local show, and everyone was quite excited that I was running for federal parliament. And they had camel races there with some professional camel riders. And they thought, no, it'd be a really good idea. Seeing as I'm running for parliament, I've got to get on a camel and race a camel. So that's how we'll settle it, camel races. Okay. <laughs> uh, Tim wants Topher for PM. He can't. He's going for the Senate. Uh, Maya has suggested Paul Barker's in the running as well, which is another very good candidate uh, in our party for, for the top billing. Um, first things first, let's try and get as many of them elected as possible, and then we yeah. can fight over the spoils. Uh, but... Uh, Thank you to both for, for coming in. I'd, please stick around. Uh, we're just going to banter for a little bit more and we'd love to have your uh, two cents or your two cents with inflation now. So it's going to be three cents soon. Yeah. Uh, but is it, looking around the politics for what's been happening uh, in, in our fine country lately, um, one of the debates that's kicked off apparently, and, and maybe JR, you can uh, catch me up on this. Uh, Elbo is promising to contribute to inflation wage spiraling. Is that right? Have I... Oh, Before you answer that, um, John Humphreys, I'm told that Kate is here. Oh, okay. Um, I, I see the same thing. So, uh, Pete, Lisa, I just off, just invited you to stay. I'm going to totally backtrack on that. That was a um, <laughs> that was what John Howard I think called a non-core promise. Uh, and so instead, I'm just going to boot you both <laughs> out. You didn't buy me a uh, and we're going to invite. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, when, when I get down there. Good to see you, Pete, um, Lisa. Thanks for coming Thank on. You for, uh, Pete, Bye. Lisa. Thanks for your Very thanks. Everybody. Thanks for all your effort and good luck. Thank you. Bye. Uh, so I believe we now have uh, our lead Senate candidate for WA, Kate Fantanil, otherwise known as Lady Liberty, that in the house. Kate, how are you? Hi. Hi. I just rushed in from pre-poll, handing out my how to votes, and I've been putting up poor flutes all day. Unfortunately, COVID is in WA. Who would have thought COVID zero was never achievable? So half of our volunteers and our candidates are in isolation at the moment. So the lead Senate candidate, the leader of the Lib Dems over here is out putting up poor flutes climbing up stovey poles and doing pre-poll. But that's what we do as a small party. So but I'm glad I can come on the show. Good to be back. Great Great to have you. You know, if they, didn't do the test, if they didn't do the test, they wouldn't know. Uh, and then they could still be working, uh, slaving away for, for your uh, election, Kate. Um, how have things been going? We haven't seen you here for a while, the, uh, the last couple of weeks on the hustings. Yes, I'm heading down to Margaret River tomorrow for a regional launch. We had my launch last week. I wore my taxes theft dress, as I'm sure you've all seen. Um, went around on social media with that. So just trying to do what I can for the cause. And yeah, out and about talking to people with my 10 lower house candidates, doing the regional launch tomorrow, and it's all happening in WA. And I think this is the, the state to watch. The Labor Party had their launch here at the day after mine, coincidentally, when all the mandates were dropped. So all eyes turn west. A lot of minus, uh, a lot of seats in play. I was in Swan earlier today and there was core flutes of Labor and Liberal everywhere. I, I called it the, the graveyard of um, democracy because neither of those can be trusted. So glad we've got Matt Thompson running in that seat, someone to vote for, but it's all happening in WA. Left myself on mute. So, so we've got some feedback going on there. Who's is, uh, so we might have to mute everyone who's not speaking whenever you're not speaking to make sure we don't get that feedback going. But it's interesting to hear that uh, the Labor Party decided to free ride off your launch, clearly just hoping that they could catch some of the, the, the media from all the mainstream media, obviously covering your launch and Labor wanted to slipstream in behind you uh, and steal some of that media. I love the fact that you the number of Gatswans behind you is growing each time you come on. Is it... Uh, just the two there, or have you got more behind you? There's two here, and there's many out and about in Perth. And tomorrow they'll be down the southwest, so keep an eye, your eyes peeled. And if you want one, let me know. We do have Gad Swan shirts, which I know David Limbrick is very jealous of. So um, hit us up and order a shirt and help the cause. I'll have to get one. I'm collecting shirts from all the states, and they're all slightly different. So uh, I say collect them all, like baseball cards. I, I am told, I know we showed it last week, but uh, Rob tells me that a picture of your dress is uh, lined up to go. There we go. Tax is theft. So for those who don't get the, the reference here, AOC wore a tax the rich shirt, a, a similar sorry, shirt, a similar dress with uh, tax the rich. And uh, I prefer Kate's take. On the theme. Can I just can I make a slight correction here? I think we need to change the language slightly. Taxation isn't theft. 
Taxation is extortion. Inflation is theft. But that's probably, well, that's say, probably too to put on a dress, so fair enough. Yeah. I, I don't know how big you think these dresses are going to be, so for uh, to, having both of those sentences, it's uh, put an essay. Just let's, We'll just put human action, the entirety of human action just written uh, on a dress. That's for education. I was purposes. going to go with flat tax rate, which is, of course, one of our Freedom Manifesto policies, but it just didn't have the same punch to it, so I stick to my libertarian um, policies and principles of tax is theft, so... As you should. Don't listen to Topher. Okay, that's fabulous. You've got uh, 10 lower house candidates, I think out of 13 seats or maybe 14, so that's terrific. 15. Is the, is the local media taking an interest in them, uh, the, the local candidates? They're, most of mine are heading out to meet the candidates' forums, which are being held by the minor parties. Interestingly, the two major parties, their candidates just aren't showing up, um, so make of that what you will. Um, so not much media is coming to those because they're just focusing on the major parties, which is a bit uh, frustrating. And I don't think it's a fair representation of what's happening in WA because there is lots of competition. We do have some fantastic candidates that's been on the show before. Paul Markham, who I'm going down for his regional launch in Forest tomorrow, one of them. Um, so we've got really good candidates, but... It's just that time when the major parties take up all the media. So hopefully I can make some noise in the next 10 days. So watch this space and we'll see what I can do. Um, Wadi has suggested a, a new uh, idea for a shirt or a banner, um, anti-taxer, with the, uh, the, the, the play on the theme of, there we go, uh, anti-taxer t-shirt idea. Not a bad one. Um, someone smarter than me could should put that together. Just, just quickly, I was racing before you got here, Kate, and feel free to jump in on any of these. Uh, but I was asking JR to get us up to speed on uh, the Labor Party is saying they want to try and contribute to uh, some more wage push inflation. Um, I don't really read the mainstream media anymore, JR, but I believe you do. You read it so that I don't have to. So what are they saying, JR? Look, I don't think it was that well thought out. Somebody asked um, uh, uh, Albanese at a press conference yesterday, do you support, uh, you know, the you know, a 5% increase in the minimum wage because there's been a 5% increase in inflation. And Albanese just sort of shot back, oh, absolutely, very confidently. And that's sort of dominated the news in the last 24 hours. Uh, now, now then, now, look, politically, I think it's probably been a positive for him. ScoMo stumbled over it. And, um, but, I mean, look, I mean, it's just, I think the Liberal Democrats support freezing the minimum wage we don't want to drop the minimum wage we might have that we've got the highest in the world um i mean what we really want we want wages to go up absolutely because an employee has overperformed and helped drive profit okay i mean that's it might seem old-fashioned but if we have a really exceptionally enthusiastic employee who gets to work early leaves leaves late goes the extra mile drives profit well, we want that employee, we want that employee to get a massive rise in their pay because they're productivity. Now, now, what, what I don't like about this whole discussion is that uh, it, it puts into the minds of lower income employees that they're just waiting for the government to tell their employer to give them a pay rise. So they've just got to sort of plod along at work, do the minimum amount, get the pay because the government says I've got to get paid that much. It's hard to sack people these days. You can come up with a, you know, you can come up with a million excuses to go to some tribunal. You know, I was unfairly dismissed. Okay, but what we need to do is, is in, in, at an end of, I mean, we always talk about productivity, productivity. Look, the average Joe Blow has got no idea what that means. I don't know what that means, to be honest. What we do need to do is have a, 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 a revival in this in this country of individualism and individual effort and doing our very very best and then we want wages we want wages to triple and that won't cause it price inflation that will be real wages growth um i was going to say absolutely but i'm not going to say absolutely to not knowing what productivity means uh for shame but no it's the, the point is uh, freedom is the only thing that's actually driven long-run sustainable wages growth uh, and the defeat of poverty around the world uh, freedom and free markets but when wages go up, they can go up because productivity goes up, which is what the free market helps to facilitate, right? The, the, the competition between businesses drives innovation and drives finding new and better ways of doing things. And it doesn't have to involve harder work. You don't have to necessarily show up early and leave late. You could work smarter. That's what the driver of productivity is people who didn't want to work longer hours learning how to work smarter 
having more outputs with fewer inputs. That's literally the, the definition. Uh, can, I, and can, I, though, can I also add that we use energy, literally, you know, whether it's petroleum or, or electricity, et cetera, to improve productivity. And by creating a situation where we have the highest el electricity prices or at times the highest electricity prices in the OECD uh, is an absolutely insane thing to then be saying we also want wages to go up. Well, hang on. You, you are literally making all of the inputs, all of the opportunities for productivity so much more expensive. This is not a way to be able to compete on the world stage and to be able to be an advanced economy for much longer. Something has to give. And if you want to have the highest electricity prices in the world, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to sustain the highest minimum wage in the world and vice versa. We have a policy that, that we believe would actually bring down electricity prices, not through government action, but by the government getting out of the way so that the market can actually function. And if that were to happen, you would have a genuine opportunity for wages to go up without necessarily hurting the, the profitability of businesses because they're saving so much money on the energy that's required for what they do. Well, I just want to say one thing on the, the so we want to see wages go up due to productivity. A person might respond with, yeah, well, that's all good and fine, but still we should put up the minimum wage. Why do we disagree with that? It's not particularly because we're worried about the profitability of business. It's great if businesses make money, you know, God bless, good luck to you. But the issue is you put up the, the minimum wage too high. And what you do is you make it so that low productivity workers can't get a job. Because if you as a worker only bring, say, $15 an hour to, to your to the business, but the business is required to pay you $20 an hour, they simply won't employ you. I mean, the act of employing you is an act of charity. They lose $5 uh, to give you a job. I mean, most some businesses are uh, charitable. We can't just assume that all businesses like to lose money for fun. That's a ridiculous assumption. So um, the problem with continually driving up the minimum wage is actually hurts the, the, the least advantaged the most in that uh, some people get a wage increase, other people lose their job outright. And unemployment is the, the largest driver of poverty. So uh, we, we don't want any sort of policy change that uh, threatens the jobs, especially the jobs of, of low skilled workers who need those jobs the most. Um, my little economics rant for the moment, I'll stop that now. We're running out of time and I wanted to touch on one more thing. Uh, segue it uh, via, our, via having Kate back in the room. Uh, so you said before that uh, WA is one to watch. Uh, it is from our party's perspective for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is, uh, to talk a bit of inside baseball, uh, there, obviously there's several parties that are called freedom parties. We're the only real freedom party, but several of them are in the mix. Uh, and many of them are better than the majors. So that's, that's great. But I think it's fair to say uh, in that race for that last Senate spot, uh, in other states, UAP is in the mix. Uh, in WA, I believe it's fair to say that UAP is not overly popular, uh, which leaves that lane open for someone like yourself, Kate. Uh, would that be a fair summary? Absolutely. So Clive Palmer is so divisive here. We see trucks driving around with his face on it. He was on the front page of the West Australian designed as Jabba the Hutt when the border wall war was happening. So very divisive in WA. Um, and that's why we're in contention here, John. And J JR, I think, is he's, he's looking to put money on Lib Dems getting the last Senate seat last I heard. So uh, we're yes. definitely out there. We're trying to fill that freedom spot. So I'll be at the Freedom Rally this Saturday. There's a big rally, Forest Place, at midday. I'm talking. Come down. We'll have the Gadsden flag and probably 20 other Gadsden flags by then. So we're trying to reclaim that space and and people just can't seem to bring themselves to vote for UAP in WA because he's been so divisive. Um, so it really is one to watch in the Senate as well as the lower house. Is the UAP targeting <laughs> in WA or have they sort of written it off? They're going hell for tongs, if that's the right saying. Um, sorry, my brain's a bit fried from campaigning, but they are advertising. They had the tear down this wall ad that was relentlessly played on TV and YouTube. The wall is down, but the mandates on the workforce remain. Um, the state of emergency McGowan has announced is going to stay until January 2023. So at the same time as he's giving out tourism vouchers, he's saying we're in a state of emergency. Uh, something doesn't add up. So... Um, definitely a lot of UAP presence, but whether it will resonate with WA people because of the division, we'll find out on election night. So I, I'm going to say, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, can you guys mute yourself just if you're not speaking? Um, 
I was hoping to use that to segue to have a broader conversation about the the various parties and options, but I see we've just hit the one hour mark and we want to keep uh, to a fairly strict rule there. Um, so we'll probably wrap it up. I could, should also just say quickly on that, uh, obviously we think we're the better option. So it makes sense for us to explain why we think we're the better option than all the parties, but we don't want to throw too much shade at the other uh, other minor parties. This is the sort of election where people need to look for alternatives away from the majors. Uh, so obviously we encourage you to vote one for us, but then we do encourage you to to search out those other minor parties. We obviously think we've got better answers than them, but uh, this is the the election for minor parties to stick together to some degree, to um, to have each other's back, to have each other's preferences, uh, and say that if if not us, then pick another minor party. Uh, and it, UAP is a, is a decent one, if not One Nation, if not Federation Party. Uh, if not, uh, I'm up, if not, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so what I say to people, is, there's a reason we're not in the same party, right? Of course, there's differences between us. There's a reason we're not in the same party, but we're, we're dealing with a situation here where the major parties have been given our trust decade after decade and have completely let us down. If we're not your preferred flavor, find another freedom friendly minor party that is obviously we want your number one, but there is a reason why we're not in the same party. Absolutely. So with uh, one hour and one minute now, I'll just do the, the wrap ups. Any last comments? Any last thoughts, uh, Kate? Oh, JR, you're, you're on mute, JR. And, uh, you're still on mute, JR, so you need to unmute yourself if you want to right. speak. See you midday, Saturday, Sydney Town Hall, uh, the mother of all freedom rallies. Yeah. Uh, there was a question. See you Saturday, midday, Forest Place, WA for the mother of all Perth rallies. Um, uh, look, I, I can't let that pass me by. See you midday Saturday in Hobart for the mother of all freedom rallies. <laughs> uh, there was a question for you from Max Topher, just asking when and where in Hobart tomorrow would he be able to track you down? Keep an eye on my socials. It depends on how well we travel. Um, but if not tomorrow, then definitely Friday. I will be having a meet and greet. Just keep an eye on all my social channels. I'll be announcing it there and I'll be sending an email. All right. Uh, with that, I think we'll wrap it up. Thank you very much for all the guests we had on, John Lata, Lisa Tazewell, uh, Pete Rothwell, and of course, Lady Liberty, our lead Senate candidate for WA, Kate Fantanel, John Ruddock, Topher Field. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, remember, we'll, we're here every Wednesday, 7.30, YouTube, Facebook, uh, and I don't know where else we go, but I'm sure we'll go to more places in time. But YouTube and Facebook, come back Wednesday at 7.30. Uh, if you haven't yet, please sign up to volunteer. Uh, please uh, dive in, join the team. It, it's actually uh, can end up being a bit of fun and it feels so much more worthwhile if you put a bit of uh, blood, sweat and tears into the endeavor so that when these three wonderful candidates turn into three wonderful senators, you'll be able to say, you know, I did some of that. So please do uh, check the website. Uh, and with that, Rob, can you please put up the uh, the final... Thank you. This, this has been authorized by John Humphreys for the Liberal Democrats, Mount Waverley, Victoria.